Hey, what up? It's the K Man, and we have a follow up video for you on the Xeno mod chip. You asked a few questions, and I did say I was going to go a bit deeper into the little chip that you can put underneath in there and tell you about some of the cool things that this mod chip can do. One of the big advantages is being able to play discs from any region, not just your console's home region. You can also play a whole pile of homebrews and non official discs. Of course you don't want to have to go burning discs for every little bit of homebrew out there which you don't have to because you can make use of that little serial port underneath there by sticking a SD to SP2 adapter which lets you use a little micro SD card and you can load up a whole pile of games and homebrew onto it running all for this little program called Swiss which I had in the last video this problem where all of the recorded videos were skipping frames and the funny thing was you go into the game and all the rendered stuff would be pretty much fine well except for my gameplay I was sort of skipping a beat here and there Fortunately, there is a way to get those smooth frames happening, as many of you in the comments of my last video pointed out. All you have to do is upgrade Swiss, which then a few of you were like, oh, how do you do that? Well, you could burn another mini DVD, but, you know, they're a bit expensive. But fortunately, you do have that SD card, which you can then load up the latest version onto. So download the latest version of Swiss from the website, then copy it onto the SD card, and then the magic to make it automatically load up the new version is rename that file to boot.dol. And voila, just like that, you've got a new version of Swiss running on your GameCube, and your videos are much smoother. The thing is, to go and boot that newer version of Swiss, you still need to have the disk in the drive so it will go through and boot off the SD. So some of you asked, well, what if my disk drive has died? What solutions are there? And a lot of people go for a drive replacement. So instead of yeah, you having your spinny drive, you can even pull out the whole part of that area there and stick in an SD card in the slot. Which then leads to the next question that was asked in my previous video. What if the GC loader is a bit more than what I want to spend? Well, there is a much cheaper solution, which is an IPL replacement or initial program loader. And that makes it so that the GameCube doesn't need to read off a disk at boot. So with this mod, you can boot straight off the SD card. The other question was, what if I don't have the older GameCube with the bottom serial port? How am I going to be able to use an SD card on my newer GameCube? All you have to do is get one of these little SD to memory card adapters. They're fairly cheap and they plug into either one of your front ports and also has the advantage that you do actually have the front port access to your SD card as well which would be great for loading up games on the fly or you know maybe you could even just load it up with a whole pile of mp3s and make use of the swiss media player and as an aside before we jump into the Game Boy adapter this mighty memory card with 118 blocks well you look at it in swiss and you find out that yeah it's not exactly as mighty as i thought it would be having less space than a floppy disk the last thing to wrap up from the previous video is how homebrew benefits the Game Boy adapter, especially if you've either lost your Game Boy player disc or you're like most of us and can only find the Game Boy player available for sale. So if you're looking to play one of your Game Boy Advance games or, you know, even one of the Game Boy original games, you really do need either that Game Boy player disc or the homebrew GBI or Game Boy interface. The GBI comes in three different flavours. The first one is one that you're most likely going to be using if you're just sort of plugging your GameCube into a regular display and has a few little nice features in it as well, like you can go and take screenshots. Here's one of the screenshots that I took. I'll put a link to it in the description. You can do a few other nice things like change the zoom and positioning on the screen. 
and if you've got the right kit you can even use it as a Game Boy Advance development kit. The speedrunning version of GBI is of course catered towards speedrunners in that it tries to stay true as close as possible to the original speed of the game and is also ideal for CRT displays. The high fidelity edition is for use with the open source scan converter and other sort of high quality converters and adapters and capture devices and they even say that with the right setup it can offer audio visual quality comparable to emulation. For those wondering how I was doing the capture from my GameCube, I used a RetroTink Mini connected up to an Elgato capture card, unfortunately having to use the composite video as my Australian GameCube does not output S video. Actually one of the reasons why I modded my black GameCube and not my silver one is that the newer silver one also doesn't have a digital output in the back. One of the cool things about the digital output is you can get a device called a Carby and output it to HDMI in nice crisp pictures. That was pretty much my short follow up to my last GameCube modding video, go check that one out if you haven't. And also check out the description, I've put a few links to a bit of the research that I did for this video. If you like new and retro gaming, please subscribe to the channel, but most of all, thanks for watching.